Hey, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about the three best flavors of content aware stuff in Photoshop. Before we get to that, our tutorial is sponsored today by graphicsdoc.com. They have an unlimited royalty free library about well over 300,000 graphics, vectors, illustrations, photos, you name it, you can go and download them. And if you use the link in the description, there is a special sign up uh, feature or uh, offer, if you will, for the tutvid.com viewers. You can get six months of this service for graphicsdoc.com for just 39 bucks. You gotta check it out. Hey, what if you need an Angry Moose mascot retro stock image? You can download it here and illegally sell it as a logo. I don't recommend that for legal reasons, but maybe you're a shady business person and that's what you do. You have the option, that's what I'm trying to say. And check it out, you can get an EPS file as well, so you get the real deal vector artwork. Make your own logos, but you get the point. You got a PNG, a JPEG option as well. Lots of cool stuff over at graphicstock.com. Again, the link's in the description. So let's talk about um, content-aware stuff. I want to first talk about the content-aware move tool, which is located underneath, this, underneath the spot healing brush over in your toolbar. We've got some options here, uh, some selection options. We're not going to mess with any of that stuff. We're going to use the move mode. I'm going to leave my structure at 7. I'm not really going to mess around with anything else. And what I'm going to do is draw a selection around the hinder end of this little fawn and I'm gonna drag it I'm holding down my shift key to keep it constrained whoop never mind I'm gonna start dragging then I'm gonna hold down my shift key to constrain it to a straight line and I'm gonna drop it I don't know somewhere out here all right you can see the deer uh, the baby deer the fawn extended a little bit but we have a gap now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit command or control J to bump this up onto its own layer you'll see why in just a second we're gonna go back to the original layer and now what I'm gonna do is I am going to well first of all I'm gonna go select and I'm gonna choose color range and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to sample the skin uh, or the, the, the coat of the deer. Something like that, right? So you can see we've selected him or her. Well, probably him because he's got antlers. Um, and there's some other stuff selected. I don't care about that. I just want to protect sort of the coat of the deer. And I can increase or decrease fuzziness. Hit OK. We've got a selection. Cool. We're going to go select and we're going to choose to save the selection. This is going to create a new channel over here in the channels panel. We're going to name this fawn. If I can spell correctly, fawn, there we go, okay. And then I can just hit command or control D to deselect channels. Boom, we have our fawn channel, great. This becomes useful, again, we're here on our original layer, because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use our uh, rectangular marquee tool and we're just gonna select kind of a middle chunk of uh, this little fawn because we need to stretch his body out because we're sort of making a freak fawn, if you will. Now we're gonna go edit, content aware, scale. And when we've done this, we have some features up here, just like your normal transform options, but we have this protect option. When you hit this, any new channels you've created, you can select. Now, we're going to choose to protect the fawn, which the area we had selected was his, his coat. So, in theory, Photoshop is going to stretch everything else and not really distort his coat. It, it is going to distort his coat a little bit because we're really stretching this pretty stinking far. Um, but... It does a much better job than if you just straight up went and free transformed it. Hit the check icon, and uh, what we need to do here, well, that actually looks pretty bad with all that junk back there. Let's undo that. Maybe what we should do is pop this up onto its own layer. Command or Control J. All right, we have that up on its own layer. Let's try going Edit, Content Aware Scale again. See, it's got that same thing selected. We're going to choose to Protect Fawn. We're going to stretch this out again. All right, and the reason I'm doing this, I'll show you in a second. We're going to go ahead and commit to that change. We can throw a mask on this layer. We can use our brush. I'm going to set my foreground color to black. I am going to right click, make my brush nice and soft. And we can just paint away because we're painting with black. All of the stretched grassy stuff out all around here. And just keep our stretched deer um, nicely here in the middle. And of course, we can also mask our uh, the other part of the deer up here. To, to sort of, kind of, blend it together. It's nowhere near perfect, but hey, this it looks ridiculous anyway. That, so, that's my excuse here. All right, there we go. We, we sort of, kind of, blend it together. Um, all right. But let's say we know this just looks absolutely ridiculous, which it does. Um, we can also use content-aware fill. Now, I'm going to merge all of these together. So, I'm going to select my bottom layer. Hold, hold down my shift key. Select the uppermost layer. Hit command or control E. That merges them all into one layer. Wow, that looks awful, doesn't it? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab our lasso tool. And uh, this is a total gamble here. I have not tried this. I have not pre-run this tutorial at all. This is straight off the cuff. We're going to go ahead and just draw a nice little selection around this guy. 
There we go, just like that. Nice little selection. We're gonna go edit fill. Now here in the fill uh, dialog box, we have the option amongst many other things to use content aware. Uh, therein, uh, Photoshop is going to sample everything around your selection and in theory, create the best possible fill for everything that is right around the selection. We're gonna go ahead and hit the OK button and see what it does deselect by hitting command or control D. It's actually not that bad. I mean, there's some texture issues here in the middle, but in large, in large part, we've made that crazy looking deer completely disappear from the photo. That's content aware in Photoshop. We covered content aware move, content aware scale, both of which are somewhat sketchy. Content aware fill on the other hand can be very, very useful. If you've got panoramic images, you need to, you know, do that whole fill in the corner thing, fill in a little sky, fill in a little foliage from the forest, whatever it may be. You can do some amazing things with content aware fill. Um, now obviously here we would need to kind of clean this up in the middle. And actually, let me just show you how to do that real quick while we're at it. We're going to go healing brush. We're going to right click. We're going to make the healing brush pretty big. I like to make my uh, the, the edges of my healing brush very hard. All right, something like that. I'm going to hold, oh, see it's telling me I need a sample from a point. So I'm going to hold alt or option, maybe right out here. And then I'm just going to paint in to maintain at least proper focus. Let that go, and boom, we have finished covering up where that deer was. Maybe it could be touched up a little tiny bit more, but that's not what this tutorial is about. It's all about content aware and how powerful it can be. So, for content aware move, content aware scale, and content aware fill in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and I'll catch you in the next one.